Hey, yay or nay? And if you're following us along, you know that we bought this swather and um, we bought a baler and a rake in the winter. And um, there's a lot to learn about haying and I'm here to tell you it's not for everyone. And I'm going to tell you why. Hey Tom, how's your first time haying? Um, we just found a needle in a haystack, right? Yeah, we found a bushing that goes in this needle bearing here that came apart. It fell off and we just had to walk back in this very yeah, it like the needle bearing survived. stickery, itchy hay. <laughs> Tom is cutting hay for the first time. We have had one challenge after another. He has had to replace belts upon belts upon bearings. I don't know. The list goes on. Hey, farm, farm boy, is it worth it? Uh, well, it's kind of fun, but I don't know about the bailing part. Yeah, we haven't got to bailing yet, and that has its own set of issues. Well? Yeah, so this is one of those things. It's like, uh, if, now I know why the other side was double netted. The other side? The other side over there that I just put together. Because it had come it. apart before. It must have. Well, we're working on this old Heston trying to keep going. Oh, you want to see our redneck gas tank? <laughs> I dreamt this up because we could not get the rust out of the tank. And so we're using a boat tank. And it's working. And it's working. Great job. Redneck hang. Great idea. <laughs> Nothing quite like the sound of the swather chugging along to make you very happy. Tom's doing a great job. So first of all, for our small farm, we have 20, just shy of 20 acres here. Um, we have a four head of cow right now, cattle, and uh, when we bought this property, it hadn't been hayed in years. And so we didn't have the equipment and we contracted with a local farmer to hay our property. Well, they had all kinds of fun here. Their swather broke down a couple times. They sucked up a porcupine and that uh, put them down for a day. Uh, they had inclement weather, um, but they had to trailer it all here. They had the equipment and they brought it in and we negotiated, they got 50%, we got 50%. What we made that first year was 46 round bales off our property that were between seven and 800 pounds. We got a lot of hay. That has literally fed our cattle for two years. And we only have, we have three round bales left, which are getting kind of nasty. Um, we could use them maybe in the beginning of the season just to help them out a little bit. But we thought that, you know, Let's just do this ourselves because last year was a record breaking hay year and we couldn't get anyone to help us. They didn't need our hay. And the year before was a drought and they were all wanted our hay. So, you know, you just don't know from year to year what things are gonna be. So we bought our own equipment. In buying our own equipment, we had to be frugal and we bought used equipment. And Tom's like, hey, I can fix anything. I can run anything. And I have total faith in him. But it has not been easy. If you have never ran one of these, that's the easy part. But fixing one was a whole nother part. Um, so far, he has replaced belts on this thing before he even started. And that was good. And then he broke another belt yesterday, or two days ago, which we were able to get. The bearing though, we were not able to get and he had to weld the bearing so it wouldn't come out. Um, he is resourceful, he's smart, he'll figure it out. Then yesterday we also sheared a bolt so we had to go into town for a bolt. Today he's stopped a couple times just because the grass is really thick and it's clogged it. So far he's still out there swathing. He's been going a good hour. This has been going on for about three days of 
three or four days of trying to hay and things keep breaking. So what do I have to say about haying so far? Well, if you do not have the resources to fix something, don't buy it. Number one, don't buy it if you can't fix it. And otherwise it's just gonna end up like everything you see on farms where there's broken equipment laying around everywhere. You just can't afford to fix it. So, so far so good. We're able to fix things that are breaking, but you know, who knows if there will always be parts available. Well, you might need to have a donor swather. Hey man, Tom, you finished? I did. I'm very excited about that. Much better than the last couple of days of uh, stop and go and fix. And this could be a new Ford fix and repair daily or something like that, but it's a Heston. Yeah. yeah. Found this... on the road dead. Found on the road dead. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we'll have to make something up for this These one, but... are definitely found in the field dead, so you have resuscitated it many yep. times. Yep, yep. <laughs> it, worked really, it worked really well today. So what was the difference of today? Was it a little drier? Uh, no, no. I cut some very, very wet grass today. Um, kept the engine RPMs up, uh, kept the blades uh, clear, and uh, tightened up the main pulley for the uh, sickle bar part of the the teeth and uh so as a as a new hay man got any advice for the rest of the farmers out there don't do it <laughs> don't do buy it your hay. No. <laughs> right buy your hay or, or uh contract yeah. somebody to cut your hay because yeah, this, this is like the most expensive uh fishing trip ever where you go catch that salmon and spend a hundred grand on the boat yeah even not though not quite as bad even though our stuff is used keeping it running could be a real challenge and if you don't have that capability yes it's probably why you see so many of these dead in the field. Yep. <laughs> so anyway, we're going to be bailing next. So join us and let's pray that the baler. Yes, we're not. We're unsure about the baler. So we are novices, never done this before. So anyway, watch us and learn or laugh. <laughs> Tom's doing good. It's getting late. He's really been working hard today. He's made about 50 bales of hay so far stuff that he cut three days ago. There goes one falling off. How exciting is that? It's like a little choo-choo train. Chugga chugga choo-choo. Here's my next adventure for the day. I'm gonna be raking. Baylor's off. We gotta go rake the middle. It's too wet to pick up. Hey boy Tom and hey girl Lucy. We are on our fifth load of hay on our car trailer out here in our pasture. We got smarter as it went. Actually the smartest was our neighbor came and helped. That was the best. He's a lot younger and he just threw him up there. But uh, after that we're using the tractor and the forks. We have bucked up about 280 hay squares. These are anywhere from 50 to 80. It really is random on the type of pasture grass that it picked up, whether it was light or, or dense. Okay, the honest truth about haying. Hay, hay, yay or nay? Well, here's what I have to say. <laughs> Okay, well, I I have mixed reviews on this. <laughs> Coming from a couple people who are probably too old to be doing this. Um, You're not too old. Well, I'm feeling it today. But we have we only have a small livestock herd of four. We'd like to grow it, but we don't want to buy anybody. So we got we have one bun in the oven, maybe two. And uh, we're doing this all for the cows. All for the cows. Tom loves that. But we went ahead over the season, if you watched us, we bought a swather, we bought a hay baler, we bought a rake, we bought a bigger tractor. Also, we could be completely self-sufficient because relying on other people 
the last two years to cut our hay has been uh, pretty much nil. I'm calling this operation more dollars than cents. More dollars than cents. So Tom, we have, uh, he's had to work on the swather. He's had to work on the baler. Luckily the tractor runs great. We have spent a lot of money to make hay for four cows. <laughs> and was this smart? No. Probably not. I mean, if you have somebody who could come in and hay your stuff and you give them 50, 50 split or 50, 60, whatever it is in your 50, area. 50, 60? Is or, that I over mean, something? How about 40, 60? Yeah, 40, 60. We're tired. <laughs> um, but anyway, your split, whatever it would be, is probably a lot smarter because they do all the work. If their stuff breaks down, they have to fix it. Um, well, this was kind of a... I guess this is something that we wanted to experience. And, I mean, we you know, are first generation farmers. We've been doing this now for two years. But we could be last generation farmers. <laughs> Our kid doesn't want anything to do with no. us. So I guess it's a one and only generation. Yeah. But anyway, um, thank you for watching us on Homestead with Blue Sky Ranch. And hope you either learned something or got a good laugh. <laughs> thank Bye. you. Bye.